Hey, shalom, shalom, Messiah Christ bless y'all, Messiah Christ bless. Uh, we out here in IUIC making. We come out here to give real solutions to real problems. Hey, how you doing, brothers? Sisters, how y'all doing? Hey, um, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate you, brothers, speaking your heart. You men and women, you sitting here, you listening. The fact that you're here, you know, some of y'all see us in the street. We have been teaching our people that there's a better way. So, what you said, what you said specifically, everybody spoke their truth, but what you said specifically about us governing ourselves, us governing ourselves, we have to understand that we are the most important people on this planet. If he wasn't, they wouldn't have hit it from you. If you wasn't the most important people, they wouldn't have told you or changed who you are. Here we just concluded a town hall meeting where we discussed the, the violence, the gun violence, the most important solution that came out was the Bible. And with that, we say shalom. shalom. I said we all had heroes Ain't it funny when the guys you looked up to turn to zeros Who was kids mesmerized by the bad guys But now that we older, we look at what's really the purpose of our lives Never knowing who we are We die with names of oppression Same names we use the least hey, Most High Christ bless With the officers out here in IYC Orlando Coming out here showing our people an example We come out here normally to teach our people the scriptures But we also want to apply Judith 824 Being an example unto the communities Showing them that we can come together in these last days and clean up ourselves as well as our community. All right? And then the Bible gave me light, man. Now I'm here painting these pictures. Has a new we got a bishop all that. See what I'm saying? Has a new we got a bishop all that. Shalom, brothers, shalom, sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is. That's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to read your letters of exhortation and your donations of support. But before I do that, I often love to cover a little bit of our hidden history. That's right, our hidden history. So get your libations, get your diet food, get your comfort food, get whatever you need to relax yourself to enjoy today's lesson. All right, so sit back, relax. Let's take a look at our hidden history, shall we? Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary. Let's take a look inside. All right, let's, we just looked up black. Often used to denote the color of physical objects. Hair, Leviticus 13, 31, verse 37. Song of Solomon 5.11. Notice what it says next. Skin. That's right. Skin. Job 30 verse 30. Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. Lamentations 4 verse 8. I want y'all to see that the scholars know that skin color is mentioned in the Bible. So anytime you hear Christians say color's not in the Bible, Black color especially, tell them to shut the hell up. They don't know what they're talking about. They support. These Christians that say such evil things support white supremacy. Listen good to what I'm saying. They support white supremacy. And, and I wanted to go down here. 
Black is also used figuratively to describe mourning. Job 30, 28, Jeremiah 4, 28, Jeremiah 8, 21, Jeremiah 14, 2. You know, Jeremiah 14, 2 says, Judah mourneth, the gates thereof languish, they are black unto the ground. That black, notice the term figuratively. It means two things. It, yes, it means mourning, but also means skin, meaning dark skin. How do I know that? I want you to take the lightest skinned black person you know. I just said it. The lightest skinned black person you know and ask yourself a question. Do they call them white, black, or other? They call them black. But they're very high yellow. They're light skinned. They're called black. Why? Is it because their skin is as black as night? It's because our condition as a race, black is also used figuratively to describe mourning. Our race is in mourning. We're called the black race. So don't ever let nobody tell you that, that the word black is only talking about mourning. No, it's also talking about skin and mourning. Two in one. Because black is also used figuratively. All right. Now, man, Roger's International Thesaurus is the third edition. All right. Let's go down. This is 1834. White eyes only. <laughs> like Deacon Aitan says. Why white eyes only? Because in 1834, where were we? Slavery. These white people had us in hard bondage, captivity, slavery, 1834. So let's go inside this book and see what they say about black. Hmm. Right there, seven. Negro, colored person, black, blackamoor, Jim Crow slang, darky, sambo, ebony, the image of God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see that? <laughs> Come on. Do y'all see that? Do you see it? The image of God. What's the image of God? Negro. Do y'all see that? Number seven, Negro, colored person, black, black and more, Jim Crow, slang, dark, sandwich, ebony, the image of God. Early Spanish Manuscript Illumination. This is the book cover. Now let's go inside the book to discuss this picture here. All right, we're going to plate 8A. Notice what it says. I highlighted it. Christ, whose darkened flesh tones now give him an almost negroid cast. Y'all see that? Let me zoom in on that. That part right there. Almost negroid cast. Meaning they're trying to say he might look black, but he's not black. And a lot of Christians go with this word. See, it says almost. But listen, we ain't stupid. Let these Christians die in a lake of fire with their slave master. This is, what, this, this is the image they're discussing. <clears throat> That's Christ in the center. They're the cherubims on the side <clears throat> and the angels around. So many times they like to say and lie and say, oh, there was a fire and that's why the skin tones got burned up. So the skin tone got burned up but not the yellow wings, not the yellow sleeves, not the green halos, and not the background. That is, the fire just jumped, boom, 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 in their hands, right? And their feet. The fire just jumped on there. I tell you, Christians are evil. Evil. Thank the Lord he woke us out of that spell. I mean, Christ almost looks Negro. He is Negro. He's black. Look at that. That looked like a black man to me. With black hands and black feet. 
is plate 9A, 9B. The Philist Goliath's challenge. The Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. Let's look at the Philistines and let's look at Israel. Okay, this guy's really big here. So by looking at this, I can tell this is supposed to be Goliath. Black, brown skin. These are the Philistines. Black, brown skin. And these are the Israelites. Black, brown skin. Let's zoom in on the Israelites. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Black, brown skin. Here's Revelation 12 and 1. The great dragon with seven heads. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, seven's down there. Seven heads and ten horns. And a woman clothed with the sun and a moon under her feet, and 12 stars around her head. One, two, wait, let me start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve stars, which represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Look at the woman. That's a black woman. The great red dragon is after her. Let's go across to the angels. Look at the Lord on the throne, black. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Look at the angels. Now something happens when the color changes. These people are thrown into the lake of fire. They're radically, radically more lighter than the angels. Hmm with a demon down here in a lake of fire. Heads. Hmm, I wonder who. <laughs> so again, there's God on the throne with the angels. He's giving instructions black. There's no if, ands, or buts. And these are old, these are painted in 900s, okay, in Spain. All right, this book is called our Living Bible. All right, let's go inside. I'm on page 254. Do y'all see this here? Painting from Dura Europa's third century AD. So this is about 200 AD. This is the first known painting of Christ. Healing the man, telling him to pick up his bed and walk. I want you to look at how they painted Christ in the year 200s, in the 200, black. Ain't no if, ands, or but about it. He's a black man pointing at this man, this other black man, to get out of his bed. And a man picks up his bed and walks. And made their lives bitter with hard service and mortar and brick. Here's a picture, a painting of the Israelites in captivity in Egypt. Painting from the tomb of Rechmir, 15th century BC, before Christ. Everybody's black. The Israelites doing the hard labor are black. Here's one of Joseph. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house. The blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in house and field. Genesis 39, 45. There's Joseph overseeing the workers in Egypt. Remember, Israel didn't come in yet. His brothers had not come in yet. Everybody's black. That's what I want you to see. A History of the Jews from the Babylonian Exile to the Present by Solomon Grazo. Okay. The Jewish Publication Society of America. I'm going to go inside this book and I'm going to show you Martin Luther, who is a Calvinist or some call him the father of the apologetics. And what I'm going to show you is that these apologetics, these Calvinists are evil race of Caucasians.
they evil. Okay, I'm on page 426. It says, Martin Luther and the Jews. In defense of the Jews, Europe in the meantime had witnessed the rise of a rebellion within the Roman Catholic Church. So now remember, there was a pro Protestant movement against the Catholic Church. Let's see if the Protestant movement changed the Roman Catholic Church's movement. Let's read on. We're here at Martin. Martin Luther, an Augustian monk and an ordained priest, has started out to preach reform and found an unexpectedly large following among the people and the nobility of Germany. Before long, his movement broke completely with the traditions and organization of Catholicism. He became a Protestant, okay, in apologetics. One of Luther's charges against the church and its methods was its harsh treatment of the Jews, talking about the black Jews, oh. He was very strong language to describe the attacks and the persecutions by which priests and monks sought to obtain the conversion of the Jews to Christianity. Talking about the Inquisition. The proper way, he argued, was the way suggested by the best among ancient fathers of the church, the way of kindness and consideration. I wanna pause there. A lot of these Christian apologists, they come the way of kindness and consideration. They love you in the name of Jesus. They just love, 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 love you. But let's read on what the Jews thought. The Jews, to the Jews, these words of the leader of the new movement came as a great relief. They were overjoyed that at last a famous Christian teacher spoke of them as human beings. They did not stop to consider Luther's real aim, which was their conversion to Christianity, as he understood it. They could grasp only the fact of his speaking and writing against the expulsions, I'm on page 427, expulsions and oppressions to which they had been subjected. A few enthusiasts among the Jews of Germany went so far in their misunderstanding of Luther that they actually congratulated him on the steps. He was taken to come closer to Judaism. The majority of the Jews looked merely for a lightening of their burdens. Luther's disappointment, here it comes now. Luther had thought that he could win the Jews with a few kind words. When this did not happen, he was bitterly disappointed. He now attributed everything to the stubbornness of the Jews and to what he chose to call the falsehoods contained in Jewish literature. He outdid, look, 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 look. He outdid the Catholic clergy in the vile terms which he heaped on the Jews and Judaism and advised, let's zoom in on this. Wait, wait, wait. And advise what? And advise their complete extermination. Do y'all see that? And advise their complete extermination. That's your Martin Luther. That's your head of the apologist movement. That's your church forefather, a demon, an Edomite demon. All right, we are on page 152. The results of Paul's teachings. It is not what happened to Paul personally that is important, but rather what happened to Paul's teachings. Even while he lived, ample evidence proves that the people to whom he preached had misunderstood him. Do y'all see that? Had misunderstood him. He had spoken in terms of high and noble idealism, of charity, that's brotherhood, of personal righteousness, meaning morality. He urged men to believe in Jesus firmly and believing in so perfect an example of godly living begin to lead a godly life themselves. Such righteous people could have no difficulty in meeting the awful day of God's judgment. 
they would surely survive it. And when the day of res resurrection came, such people would surely be permitted to live again and forever. But most, here it comes, listen good, but most of the people who listened to Paul remembered only the connection between believing in Jesus and meriting God's mercy and ultimate resurrection. They skipped the middle step, the need to live godly lives, meaning keeping the commandments. These pagan Christians, they skipped the middle step, the need to live godly lives, meaning keeping God's commandments. Thus, faith in Jesus came to be the only and entire basis of the religion adopted by the pagan Christians, while the Judeo-Christians who lived in Palestine continued to observe Jewish law. See, the root and foundation of Christianity, brothers and sisters, is paganism. And they always skip the middle step the need to live godly lives. They don't want that thing. Christianity is a pagan religion, pagan Christians. All right, Russian icons. This is by Father Vladimir Ivanov. Now I'm gonna go inside the book and show you the transfiguration Plate 18, the transfiguration of the Lord. Let's zoom in. There's Christ in the center. Moses on the right with the tablet. Elijah on the left. Black, black men. When you pan down, you got Peter, James, and John sleeping. What color are they? They are black. All right. Now what I want to do, I want to go to plate 20. The Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, with scenes from their lives. There's Peter and Paul right there. Black. Look at their skin. And it gets even darker when we go to the side and look at the travels of Paul and Peter, true apostles. I want you to see it. Let your kids see how black they are. We have nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be ashamed of. We were warned to keep the commandments, not break them, we broke them, and we went into captivity. We were warned. Look at the black images. I want y'all to see the black paintings. Let's take a look. Peter crucified upside down. And in the book of Acts, you read about Paul going to black nobility. A lot of times we just assume that they were Caucasians, but no, some of them were black. The governors and things of that nature. Do y'all see? The beheading. His head was cut off. There's the head. I believe this one was Paul. I could be wrong. I'll put in the comment board if you remember. So what are we looking at? Peter and Paul. Let me, let me make sure. The holy apostles, Peter and Paul, with scenes from their lives. So don't let your children be fooled. You don't be fooled. Peter and Paul were black. Christ was black. The apostles were all black. Nobody was Caucasian. There was no, no Israelite Caucasian running around. Crucifixion of the Lord. 
crucifixion of the Lord, plate 36. Plate 36. What color is the Lord? Black. Look at the black angels around him. Look at the white loincloth. Why am I pointing out the white loincloth? Because lying Christians say, oh, there was a fire. And that's why the skin is dark. So then why wasn't the loincloth burned? Hmm? Why wasn't the background burned? Huh? You bunch of lying Christians, you. Look at one of the Roman guards, black. There's Mary, the women, crying at the cross. Black, black women who had sense, who loved the truth, who loved keeping the commandments, who loved the Lord. This is what the Lord is looking for today. What color is it? I'm going to ask again. What color is Christ here on the cross? Black. They don't push this in Sunday school. What color are the angels? Black. They don't show you this in Sunday school. These lying pagan Christians. What color is Mary and the other women with her? Black. They don't show this to keep us in the dark, to keep us subservient and docile to them, to white supremacy. That's what they do. This is what they show us, white people painting white images of themselves as the angels nowadays. This is what's going on. This is the evil of what the Bible prophesied about. These Russian and Greek Orthodox uh, bastards, that's right. What do they do? Change all the dark images and make them Caucasian. This is what you're looking at. There's Christ black with a beard in the forefront. You got a Caucasian image he's painting. They paint over all the black images and make them Caucasian. Look in the background. One of the kings of uh, Russia, back in the day, way back, the Israelites. Then they push Caucasian images on us. I ain't making nothing up. I'm showing you evidence. I'm showing you proof. Get mad if you want. Look at this. This is what you got in a pagan Christian church. This is the garbage they push on our children. Look, Jesus loved the little children. Jesus loved me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. This is the garbage they push. Then we submit ourselves to white supremacy. Evil. Totally evil. Look at this one. Look at Mary in Christ black. Let me let me let me get it. Let me, let me get in there. Mary in Christ black. If 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 that's the baby Christ, then who in the hell is this adult? See how deceitful they are? Do you see how deceitful they are? Mary black, black baby Christ. Adult Christ is Caucasian. This, you can't make this crap up. Look at this one. All these Edomites in Russia carrying a tabernacle having black images. Look at the black faces. Look, you can just see it. Look at the spots of faces, black, brown faces. Waiting for a blessing. The only blessing they're going to get is a curse from God when Messiah returns. These evil race. And you want to marry them. See, and this is what they push out in the public. Channel 13 and all of that. Look, Caucasian images. 
That's what they do. That's what these people do. So all on the news, you'll get people like this. They'll come with these quasi, these funny looking paintings and you're like, what the hell? Look at this one. Well, in this one, you can see they're dark in the back. This is over in Russia, though. But in the foreground, you got a Caucasian Jesus. See that? This is what they do with all the confusion. These are the images they push throughout America, Caucasian images. So your children grow up hating each other, despising one another. Your daughters grow up as twerkers and whores, drug users, drug abusers, all because of this. You might not understand it yet, but one day you will. When you have a low self-esteem image of yourself, this is what happens. They know that. Right, here's the next book, Pictorial History of Israel. Let's go inside. Take a look. Unto thy seed. What do y'all see? You see black Jews, black Israelites working in ancient Egypt. Let's see where this is from. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt was found in the Theban tomb of Rechmir, governor and vizier, at the time of Thutmose III, about 1450 BCE. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. Exodus chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. What color are these Israelites? What color are they? Well, I'm going to ask you again. Can somebody ask T.D. Jakes what color are the real original Hebrews? What color are the Hebrew Israelites there? This is ancient artifacts, ancient black. They are painted as black in the tombs. See, this history has been hidden, and T.D. Jakes, if he knows of it and decides not to teach it, he's the devil, a black, ashy devil the Bible speaks of. And all of you in his congregation, y'all going to be damned to hell and back. Every last one of you that follow him. Keep up with these lies. All right, here's Harper's Bible Dictionary. This is page 331. In 701 BC, Assyrian king Sennacherib conquered most of Judah including the fortress city of Lachish. The victory was recorded in remarkable detail on base reliefs at his Nineveh palace. This scene is poignant testimony to the plight of his victims, who were deported with only what they could carry on their backs. Uh, what does it say? Let's take a look at Judah. Do y'all see this? This is the Sennacherim guard. Look at the people of Judah. Look at, look at their hair. Look at their hair. This is a stone relief. Look at the little boy. These are not Caucasians. These are not Edomites. These are black men with cornrows. Ah, two A. I'm gonna look at pay, picture one, picture two A and two B. Fresco paintings from the Western Wall of the third century A.D. synagogues at Dura Europis, a city on the Euphrates River in Syria. Let's see. Hmm. All right, let me see who we're going to look at. Bear with me a second. At the right, 2B depicts Moses three times. 
From far right to left, Moses strides toward the Red Sea with staff upraised, leading the ancient Israelites out of Egypt. Let's see what Moses and the ancient Israelites looked like. Bam! There's Moses. There's Moses there. Remember, it said it depicts him three times. Moses here, Moses here, and Moses here. Take a look. And the Egyptians are being drowned in the waters. The Egyptians are black. Moses is black. The hand of God is black. That's Aaron. Is Menorah. Moses and the 12 tribes of Israel. Moses again. Moses with the staff held over his head and the Egyptians being drowned in the Red Sea. Do y'all see this? So again, if y'all keep following that line, T.D. Thomas Dexter Jakes, I can't help you. He jumping around uh, Conan, talking about he know who he is. He don't know who he is. And neither does his congregation. The Israelites are black. Moses is black. The hand of God is black. All right. The Jews, a study of race and environment by Maurice Fishberg. Published in 19, 1911. All right, I'm going over to page 64. Watch what it says. Pay close attention. Referring to the converted white Jews, watch what it says. Once I get into focus. These fair-haired Jews created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo-Germanic Jews, talking about the white Jews, as Virchow, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark-complexioned race like the Jews. Do y'all see that? A dark, look at that, a dark complexioned race like the Jews. Wow. These fair-haired Jews created a problem for anthropologists. It is a question whence these Indo-Germanic Jews, talking about these converts, as Virchow called them, have found their way into the midst of a dark complexion race like the Jews. Letting you know the original Jews, the real Jews, are a dark complexioned race. Wow. Is I'm on page 150. Page 150. Watch this. The Jew Negroes at first spoke a corrupted Portuguese combined with Hebrew and native words. You know what? I don't want this one. Oh, I wanted this over here. I'm on page 149. It is stated that the Falashas are not the only Jews of Negro race. 
Bastion speaks of Negro Jews living on the Loango coast in Western Africa. They are called there Mavambu or Judeos. And these are Bantu. Okay, there's a lot more. Those of us that came to America. So I'm showing you that the real Jews are black. Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt, Barbary, Libya, and Bildegurid, the land of Negroes, Guinea, Ethiopia, and the Abyssinians. Abyssinia, that's Ethiopia. All right. This was published in 1670, 1670. Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt, Barbary, Libya, and Bill Delgarid, the land of Negroes, Guinea, Ethiopia, and the Abyssinians, that's Ethiopia, published in 1670. 1670. Let's go in. I'm on page 34. That's the original page, but in this book it's on 31. All right. I'm going to start here. Many Jews also are scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed. It's talking about Africa. I'm see the title of Africa. Many Jews also are scattered over this region. What region? Africa. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed, inhabiting both, si inhabiting both sides the river Niger, or Niger. Others, uh, others are Asian strangers who fled thither either from the desolation of Jerusalem by Vespasian at 70 AD, or from Judea, wasted and depopulated by the Romans, Persians, Saracens, that's Muslims, and Christians, or else such as came out of Europe, whence they were banished. So it's referring to those Jews, those black Jews that were banished, those Jews that were keeping the commandments that were banished. Not all the all the blacks, but the ones keeping the commandments. Out of some, they were banished where from where? Out of some parts of Italy in the year 1342, out of Spain in the year 1462, out of the Low Countries, that's the Netherlands, in 1350, out of France in 1403, out of England in 1422. These all defer in habit and are divided into several tribes, having no dominion, though both wealthy and numerous, but despised of all nations, and so abominated by the Turks that they are not admitted to be Mohammedans unless first baptized, and then, no other, and then no otherwise made use of than to receive their customs and gather in their taxes. All right, here's, you see Spain there. All right, I want you to look at the borders of Africa. There's Arabia. Let me just come in closer. All right, there's Somaliland. This is the Horn of Africa. Ethiopia, called Abyssinia at this time. I want you to notice where they got the Jews located at. There's the Falashas there. Look over here, Yemen Jews. That's in Arabia. But I want to focus on Africa. All right. Tababan Jews, a pre Exilic Yahwism, that's for those that followed Yahweh. All right, let's move over, let's move over. I'm gonna go down to the bottom. Look, Loando Jews, this is on the coast of Africa. 
All right. Mavumbu Jews. Look, this is what I was just showing you in the other books. Santome Jews. Remember the Israelites was, the Jews were cast out of Spain and sent to Santome or St. Thomas. That's that island right there. All right. Look, Levite cities. Where amongst the houses? You know, a lot of you Nigerians, you hate the houses. It's Cameroons. Levite cities over here. This is Nigeria. Night seat. N I G E R I A. Nigeria. You got Levite cities there. Houses. Levite cities. Levite cities. Beni Ephraim. Sons of Ephraim. Beni means, or Benai means sons of Ephraim. Okay. The Homi. The Homi Jews. Jewish traces all amongst the Ashanti. Judeo paganism. So these Israelites here were following pagan customs around Cape Verde and Senegambia. The Lamb Lamb, once a Jewish colony, Timbuktu. Let's go around here. Medieval Jewish kingdom. Jewish kingdom of Ganada. Let me go down. Let me find some of these words. Let me look. Mm. Let me go up along the coast. I'm going to follow the coastline. Beni Musa. Son of Mo Sons of Moses. Now, it's hard for me to see. Y'all know I wear glasses, but if y'all at home, y'all could spot some of this stuff before I do. Berber Jews. Berber Jews. Black Jews. And I want y'all to see this because this is what the so-called scholars put together. The Jews were cast out of Spain. Remember that history I've been showing y'all for a while. My eyesight ain't that good, but I'm just showing y'all this map. So if y'all see something, y'all can freeze screen it. Freeze the screen! <laughs> Israel immigrates here. Look at that. To Arabia. That's Arabia right there. Jewish traces. What's that say? Wasambara. Yemen Jews and Falashas, Berber, Moorish, and Negro Jews. So the white man knows the blacks are the Israelites. They know that. They keep this stuff hidden from us. So you saw it for yourself. You saw it for yourself. Now today, we're going to take a look at Tanya Fernandez Anderson. She's from Cape Verde. That's off the coast of Africa. She's an American politician and nonprofit executive who's a member of the Boston City Council for the 7th District. She's a Democrat elected in 2021. Now, we've been telling y'all for a while now, we got to stay out of this political realm and these religious realms because it is not for us. Now, uh, Tanya Fernandez Anderson, she got fed up. My sister got fed up. Let's take a look. Let's take a listen when she addresses the Boston City Council, shall we? Councilor Braden, a white woman, has it that now that this body, because counselors, for example, all the white counselors here stick together, that they will vote or try to move the districts in a way that is not diverse sufficiently to be able to vote in electives of color. We have fought for a very long time. It is 2022. We're going back and forth about allegations, but here people are not innocent until proven guilty. People are guilty first. People are crucified. People are lynched. Same old tricks, same masters, though. 
and still people now everything's changed and everybody everybody's upset everybody is boiling up people are calling me and telling me don't say anything stay in your lane be quiet sit down you will lose your seat they won't vote for you fight don't fight what the fuck do I have to do in this fucking council in order to get respect as a black woman? And I'm gonna tell you, I'm not afraid of losing the votes. I'm not afraid of deceit. I'm not afraid of anybody here. This is the message that I got. Don't forget this country is built with white people, sustained by white people. If you don't like it, why don't you take your ass back to your shithole with your stupid ass scarf on your head, you ugly fucking hoe. This is what I get. I get about three or four of them in my office. I have two sons. I've made mistakes. And once I learned it, I corrected immediately because I made a stupid mistake because I brought people that were loyal to me. I have, I have six staff. As of yesterday, I have four. That is clear for everyone to understand. When I make a mistake, I will be clear. I don't hate you as a white woman. I don't hate you as a white man. I am sick and tired of this body so stupidly racially divided, so afraid, so depraved. People with no faith because they are afraid of their losing their investment. They're afraid of bargaining. They're afraid of leveraging. These people have, oh my God, I can't even call you cowards because desperation does. All right. You saw our sister. You saw our sister. Uh, Tanya Fernandez Anderson. All right. So let's get into the scriptures now. I'm just going to take us on a slight journey. And we're going to take a look and see what the Bible has to say. Because a lot of you, believe it or not, a lot of you brothers and a lot of you sisters truly believe that politics is the way. If you don't think religion is the way, your next best option is politics. You think vote, vote, vote from entertainers to the man or woman on the street. Vote, vote, vote. Voting is the way. Voting is the way. But what does God almighty have to say and teach us let's go to isaiah chapter 30 and i'm gonna start at verse 8 and it reads now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book so the table and the book is the same thing when it says write it before them in a table it's making reference to pages in a book and note it in a book the book is making reference is the holy bible that it may be for the time to come forever and ever so the scriptures say is teaching us that God told Isaiah, as he did all the prophets, to write what his words said in a book, the book we now call the Bible, that it may come for, that it shall be for the time to come forever and ever. Verse nine, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You see what's wrong with our people? We're so rebellious. We don't want to hear the law of the Lord. You like the fact that we're Israelites. Some of you like the thought that we're Christians. But the bottom line, the majority of you hate the law of God. Let's read verse 9 again. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Verse 10, which say to the seers, see not. The word seer is prophet. When you read 1 Samuel 9, verse 9, it tells you that the word seer was an ancient word for prophet. So let's read verse 10 again. It says, which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. So what do y'all want to hear? You want to hear lie after lie after lie. You want to hear the white man's religions is the way. You want to hear that the white man's politics, his political realm is the way for our people. That's what y'all want to hear. But that's not the message of the Holy Bible. That's not the message of God Almighty. Verse 11. 
Get you out of the way. This is what y'all say to the prophets, the seers. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So what? y'all don't want to hear the Holy One of Israel. You don't want to hear the Holy One of Israel, the Holy God of Israel. You don't want to hear what he got to say. Verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. What is verse 12 telling us? That our people trust in oppression. Believe it or not, politics, the political realm, democracy, republicanism, those are philosophies of oppression. That's right. I said it because the Bible says it. These are doctrines of oppression, just like Christianity is a doctrine of oppression. Then it, when it says and perverseness, let's get into the, perver to the perverseness. For example, what's the perversion in Christianity? Married today, divorced tomorrow, homosexuality in the church. Oh, yeah, running rapid. Just look at your choir directors and choirs. Lesbians and homos all up in there. Mm -hmm. Just like in your politics, in your political realm. Just like in your political realm. Let's continue. Isaiah chapter 30. Uh, let me see. Verse 13. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall. Notice it says iniquity. What does iniquity mean? Sin, breaking of God's commandments. Let's read on. Swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Y'all see that? You hear what the Bible is saying? Do you hear what the Bible is saying? Now, let's go a few chapters over to Isaiah 32. And verse 5 says, Isaiah 32, verse 5. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. You see that? Now, when you think of a, a liberal uh, politician, you think of a Democrat. A liberal politician could be conservative, but generally the first thing that pops in most people's head is, is a Democrat. Okay? And not that there's a difference between Democrats and Republicans. They're two demons on the same, two demons on the same snake. Two-headed dragon. I don't know how to say it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Verse 5 again. For the vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. When you look up that word churl, it means like rude. It's still referring to the liberal person, the Democrat. And a, and a liberal person can be in any kind of political, um, have any kind of political title. Okay, but generally... We refer to them as Democrats. Verse six, for the vile person will speak villainy. You see that for the vile person will speak villainy, meaning evil, and his heart will work iniquity, meaning sin to practice hypocrisy. You ever notice in the political realm, they always promise the black community, we'll do this for you. We'll do that for you. Hell, we'll lower taxes. We'll give you new schools, better uh, uh, pay grade. It's all a lie. Once they enter the office, look at hell, look at uh, 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 Barack Obama. He promised the black community a whole lot of nothing. What did y'all get? Nothing. Nothing, honey. You got nothing. OK, now let's read on. It says to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord. Every one of these liberals utters errors against the Lord. They can't stand the Bible. Y'all better stay out of that political realm to make empty the soul of the hungry. Black people are the hungry. Our soul is empty. What do we want? Reparations. What do they say? Give them jobs. Give them jobs. Don't give them reparations. What's that little old man, Bernie Sanders? Even him and uh, Hillary Clinton. Give them jobs. Give them jobs. Don't give them reparations. Give them jobs. You can't make this stuff up. We're hungry in this society. And they make our souls empty. Let's read that part again. It's said to make empty the soul of the hungry. We want better housing. We get projects. We want better school system. We get terrible school system. That's right. I said it. Christopher Columbus discovered America. Uh, uh, what did they say? Uh, uh, have a, uh, 
a multicultural curriculum. And where's the black man and black woman? Always on the bottom. Where's our history start? Slavery. But is that true? No. We hungry. We hungry. We hungry for truth. And our people never get it. They promise to lower taxes, get us better, better uh, uh, jobs. Nope, nope, nope. But there's always room for drugs, prison. Okay, there's always room for that. Police uh, 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 abuse. There's always room for that. Then it reads on. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. We're thirsty. Our drink always fails. We got our mouth open. We want, we want somebody to quench our thirst. Our thirst for what? Our thirst for truth and justice. And we never get it. We never, ever get it. I hope y'all listening. I hope y'all paying very close attention to what I am saying, to what I'm bringing out. Okay? Now, where was I at? Verse 7, the instruments also of the churl, meaning the rude, are evil. Remember, the churl is going back to the liberal person. Their instruments are evil. They get up on that podium and practice hypocrisy. They lie, lie, lie. It says he deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. Who's the poor? The Israelites. When you read Isaiah 14, 32, it proves that the poor of Zion is who the Lord is making reference to. It says, even when the needy speaketh right, even when we telling the truth, we've been in captivity for 424 years. Well, let me put it this way. I want you to think, write this down or, or Google this, Google this slavery in Spain. Slavery started for the black man and black, black women, black man and black woman, excuse me, <laughs> with Spain. What year was it? 1441. When were we emancipated? 1865. Do the math. 1441 to 1865. That's 424 years of chattel slavery. Now, chattel slavery is yokes of iron, shackles and chains. Understand what I'm saying? This preceded the black codes. This preceded Jim Crow, 424 years of chattel slavery. Nobody could have lived through that. No other race have gone through what we've gone through. Yet when our people ask for reparations, oh, hell no. You hear all kind of if, ands, or buts, then you want to, here's what you hear. Oh, well, we sorry for slavery. Sorry, don't cut it. Sorry, don't cut it. Anybody could say they sorry. You got to be kidding me. If a thief truly is sorry to someone for what he stole, what should he do? Give back what he stole. Return what he stole. That's signs, a sign of true repentance. All the white man want to do is give you lip service. I'm sorry. And y'all want to, and here you are clapping your hands. Shut up, clapping your damn hands. The hell is wrong with y'all? Okay. Uh, let's read that again. Verse seven, the instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. Even when the needy speaketh right, even when we speak right, we get lies, lies, lies. Verse eight, but the liberal deviseth liberal things and by liberal things shall he stand. Watch this verse nine. Rise up ye women that are at ease. That's right. Black women, you at ease in society. Our sister, she in Boston, one of the most racist, one of the most racist places on in America. And you shocked at what you see? You shocked at what's going on? Well, I ain't. Okay, let's read that again, verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Why does the Lord say that? Because you women turn a deaf ear to the Bible. Yeah, you read John 3, 16. Yeah, you look for scriptures on love. But the, the milk, the, no, not to say the milk. Well, I could say the milk, the meat and potatoes of the scriptures you reject. That's what's wrong with you black women. The Bible talks about marriage. Oh, I don't want to hear nothing about that. 
I, dress modestly. Ah, I don't want to hear nothing about that. Huh? What the man takes the lead. Ah, I don't want to hear nothing about that. That's why the Lord gives this message to you black women, you black and Latino women. Rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. You black and with Latino women, you've been very careless since you got freed from yokes of iron. Very, very careless. Trusting in everything white society says. What the hell is wrong with you? So God says, give ear unto my speech, meaning the Bible. That's what that means. From there, let's go to Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. This is about our people, and this is more proof that the children of Israel are captive in bondage here in Babylon the Great, which you call the United States of America. Revelation 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Judgment is coming to the United States of America, brothers and sisters. I know that's not taught to you in church. Your churches will never teach you that for two reasons. A, most of them don't know it because they don't know the Bible. Two, they've been paid by this, by this system not to teach you the truth. Now, when it says, come out of her, my people, let's go to a precept. I'm going to go to Jeremiah 51 and verse 6. Okay, verse 6 reads, flee out of the midst of Babylon. Let me start at verse 5. Let me start at verse 5. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God. See, the Most High is still with us. He's waiting for us to repent, brothers. He's waiting for us to repent, sisters. It reads on. Uh, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Now watch this. Verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. See, we went from Israel into Bab the Babylonian captivity. Ancient Babylon, but now we're bringing it up to today. Because we read in Revelation 18, that's modern day Babylon the Great. The spiritual Babylon the Great. Okay, the metaphorical, the allegorical Babylon the Great, which is the United States of America. Verse 6, again, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. So the point is delivering your soul. This isn't a flee doctrine where you got to get up and go to um, Egypt or, or Morocco or uh, Liberia or South Africa or Ghana or Nigeria. No, 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 because America's reach is long. America's reach is long. Now watch this. So I want y'all to understand what it's talking about a spiritual separating yourself from the sins of Babylon, separating from their religions, their politics, things of that nature. Verse six, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Now, let's jump over from there to verse um, 45. Jeremiah 51, verse 45. My people, go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. This is a spiritual revolution. This is a, a spiritual revolution. Deliver your soul. Deliver your soul. Learn that you're the Israelites and keep God's commandments. I hope y'all understand that. I really do. From there, I want to go over to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Bear with me. You know, ever notice, you ever notice, and not, I'm not saying all, but I'm saying there are many black politicians married to Caucasians. I'm going to say it again. There are many black politicians and Latino. Latina, <laughs> married to Caucasians. Now, from what I'm hearing, I hear that that boosts your credibility. That boosts white folks trusting you more. There's an expression, show me who you married to and I'll show you who your allegiance is to. Y'all get that? Y'all understand that? But watch what the Bible says. Second Corinthians 6 verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, 
and I will receive you. What's the unclean thing? Their religions, their religious policies, their political policies. Listen, brothers, listen, sisters. Verse 18, and I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Judgment is coming, brothers. Judgment is coming, sisters. I can't say it enough. I can't stress it enough. I pray that y'all listening. I really, really do. It seems like y'all turn a deaf ear to that thing. Now, let's take, for example, our sister Ilhan Omar. Everybody was excited when she um, became a member of Congress. Okay. Now, Ilhan Omar, she is Somalian. Ilhan Omar, she kicked her black husband to the curb. Listen to what I'm saying. Ilhan Omar kicked her black husband to the curb to have an affair with a white man. Did y'all hear what I said? To have an affair with a white man. Her Somali com community booed the hell out of her at a concert. First Somali American elected to Congress squad member Ilan Omar getting a not so warm welcome at a Somali music festival in her home state. And she's wondering why, why you had a beautiful relationship with your black husband, but he wasn't good enough. So what'd you do? You kicked him to the curb and you got with the white man. OK, uh, she ain't the only one. Look at our other sister, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's engaged to a white man, too. I guess that helps push their career. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. You better come out of the politics. Come out. From there, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. And it reads, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Now, you, you may ask yourself, well, who troubles me? Who troubles us? You looking around at your brother next door. You looking around at your sister across the street. No, 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 no. Watch this. Let's go to Luke chapter one. I'm just going to help you out a little bit. Luke chapter one and verse uh, 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. This is talking about white folks. They're the ones who hate us. They're the enemies the Bible is teaching us about. They're the ones that enslaved us. Friends don't enslave friends. Okay? But you're so quick to want to point the finger at your black brother or black sister, Latin brother, Latin sister, is talking about the white man. First and foremost, followed by the Arabs. Okay, you, there's a whole list of the enemies of God in Psalms, the 83rd chapter. Start at verse one and read down. I lie not. But right now, I'm just getting to the nitty gritty of things. Luke 171, that we, we who? We Israelites should be saved from our enemies. Who's our enemies? Those that put us in slavery for 424 years. After that, after emancipation, what'd they do? They enforced uh, black codes on us. After that, they formed Jim Crow laws. After that came the Ku Klux Klan. You can't make this stuff up. Verse 71 again, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. I hope y'all understand that. Now, while I, well, listen, good, I, I'm not finished with our sister, uh, 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 Tanya Anderson, Tanya F. Anderson. She's shocked. Bang the table about what's going on over there in Boston. Well, if you just check out a little bit of history, y'all remember Bill Russell? He was the uh, uh, basketball player who played as a center for the Boston Celtics on the NBA from 1956 to 1969. He was a five-time NBA most valuable player and a 12-time NBA play all-star. He was the centerpiece of the Celtics dynasty that won 11, you heard what I said, 11 NBA championships during his 13-year career. They gave Bill 
Russell Hell. Hell, he didn't even want to retire his jersey in Boston because they were so racist. And you know, Boston players, they, Boston people, oh, it's not us. It's not us. Oh, cut it. Stop it. Even LeBron James said that Boston was racist as hell. Take a look. Take a listen. LeBron James returning to the Drew League overnight and scoring 42 points in highlight after highlight. But it's his off-court comments making headlines this morning. Finds James layup. It's one of the most iconic rivalries in all of sports, the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers, the team combining for 34 NBA titles. But this morning, it's Boston fans crying foul over comments made by LeBron James in the latest episode of his show, The Shop. In basketball, there are fans that you go play away that they can literally take the game from you. I mean, Boston. Boston, yeah. Why, why, do, you, why do you hate Boston? Because they're racist. That's In a candid conversation, James and other notable figures discussed how fans and sportsmanship can shape their experiences. James citing taunts and an incident 10 years ago in which a fan poured beer on top of his head. They might throw something on you. I mean, I got a beer thrown on me leaving the game. Boston residents reacting to James's latest claims. I hate that he said Boston fans are racist when, you know, 75 percent of us are not they always have something against us i don't know another town that says whatever we want like boston boston says whatever they want james who last year became a part owner of the red sox also alleging some boston fans wore t-shirts with expletives next to his initials a celtic spokesperson told the boston globe the team does not sell any merchandise that disparages james or any other opposing player they have not responded to james's other comments about racism among the fans lebron james it seems to me was was talking about his own personal experiences, which have value and which are important and which are believable. He's not the first NBA player to allege racism among the city's sports fans. Last year, ex-Celtic Kyrie Irving called out subtle racism after a series of his own run-ins with Boston fans. Celtic star Jalen Brown responding to Irving's comments, saying that's not a fair judgment. I've kind of seen uh, the things floating around with Boston and the topic of racism. I think by painting every Celtic fan as a, as a racist would be unfair. The behavior of some Celtics fans were on full display earlier this summer when the Golden State Warriors complained during the NBA Finals. We played in front of rude people before, dropping F-bombs with children in the crowd. Real classy, good job, Boston. And we have reached out to LeBron and the Celtics for comment, but they have not responded. And you know what? They all, what the news does, listen, crafty counsel, real quick. When black people call out the evil of white society, you know what reporters do? They look for the first ignorant black man or first ignorant black woman who's going, who wants to assimilate and, and hopes they say the same st st stupid things. That's what they say. Oh, it's not all Boston that's racist. It's not all of the brother. Shut the hell up. He wasn't talking about black folks. And you know that. And I know that he was talking about white folks. So do us all a favor and shut the hell up. Make everybody sick. The hell is this? And you white reporters, you y'all good at your job because you go around looking for the first dumb Negro. Oh, this one right here. Oh, yeah. He going to say something stupid. You best to believe it. He ain't going to know what LeBron uh, meant by that. Or he going to make believe he don't and say something stupid so that white people just love him. Let's go on back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. It reads, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense. That word recompense means to pay back tribulation to them that trouble you. So, White folks, your day is coming. Judgment and justice is coming to you. You've never seen a uh, 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 judgment like it's going to come on you. Black man, black woman, justice is coming. Justice is, see, Christianity don't want to teach all this. Verse seven, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. What does that part mean? You brothers and sisters that know you're being troubled by, by white society, you brothers and sisters uh, like LeBron James, like uh, 
Tanya F. Anderson, you know you're troubled. You know you're catching hell with these white folks. You better come into this truth as an Israelite. Come into this truth. Repent of your sins as Israel. That's what it means in verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. See, Christ is coming. That's right. The black Messiah, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords is coming with his black angels, with the so-called, what America call them, UFOs. Hmm. Watch this verse eight. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. See, you white folks, you don't know God. You don't know the Lord. In your false churches and your false synagogues, you don't know the Lord. Let's read verse 8 again. I like that one. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. And black man, black woman, whichever one of y'all. You can't repent of your sins. You can't come out of there. These white supremacist religions, these white supremacist political groups, you're going to pay right along with your slave master. You're going to pay. You're going to pay. Judgment's going to hit you too. Don't think you're going to escape because you're not. Okay, let's read that again. Verse nine, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Y'all see that? I hope y'all see that. <laughs> so I'm going in that then, brothers and sisters. I, I pray that you glean something from this short lesson. I pray you do. I pray you did. Write down, take notes, brothers and sisters, take notes, rewind. So y'all have, you have a, you have, what is it called? You got an advantage, whereas I did not. When I came into truth back in 1990, there was no internet that, that was like it is today. There was no internet like it is today where you could rewind, you don't, no YouTube, none of that. We had to physically go to class and take notes. And if you went to class and unfortunately didn't know how to take good notes, oh, well, you just missed out. You just missed out. Okay. So y'all have an advantage. Whereas when I came in as truth, I didn't have it. So take your notes, rewind, play it again over and over and over. Because you learn through repetition. You learn through repetition. Oh, and if I forgot to say it, Christmas is a white supremacist holiday and is of the devil. You can read that in Jeremiah 10, verse 1 through 5. And look at many of the videos we got on Christmas being a, 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 a sacrilege of a holiday. It's evil. All right. So now let's get to the reading of the shout out letters and donations. All right. Winter solstice a couple of days later was the shortest day of the year and the pagans had something called Saturnalia and it was a time of lawlessness because all the laws were suspended and people, they, a bunch of singers were actually wandered the streets naked singing and, and then they had orgies, all this business about mistletoe, pagan, Christmas trees, pagan, giving out gifts, pagan every bit of it is pagan. the morals that they captured they forced to become christians this is why the ones they captured they became the slaves of the white christians they forced them to become christians and became the servants or slaves of the caucasians Again. and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry merry christmas is about the conquering of the blacks the israelites that's what it's about read it again and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. At one time the gifts was you and I. We were the gifts they gave one to another. Today it's chocolate and candy and transformer toys. They just changed it. That's all they did. But the whole celebration was about us being conquered. The proof is in Holland. Because some of us get so ignorant. No, it's about elves. It ain't about no damn elves. They changed that to keep us asleep. The whole celebration is our destruction.
All right, let's get to the reading of the shout out letters and donations. This first letter reads, grace and peace to you, Bishop Nathaniel. I watch the classes every Sabbath. So good. Hey, side note. I know a lot of you say you watch the classes, but what would be good if you definitely take notes? Like I see here, the sister writes, I'll be trying to keep up writing the scriptures down. Well, that's good. And, you know, uh, once it's up, you can s- slow it down, pause it, I mean, rewind. That would be best because a, t- a lot of times I hear brothers and sisters say they watch the classes and some of them do some of the most evil things you could imagine. And I'm like, I thought you watch all the classes. So now I hope everybody understands what I'm saying. So let me get back to the letter. All right, grace and peace to you, Bishop Nathaniel. I watch the classes every Sabbath. So good. I've been trying to keep up writing the scriptures down. All praises. I love the classes. Bishop Nathaniel, it was a class when you speaking about the sisters leaving inappropriate things out. It was not good. I believe that it should be the sisters of IUIC talking to the sister. I say that with love. You hard on sisters sometimes. Yes, I am very hard on sisters. Y'all remember Eve, right? <laughs> Don't forget our foremother Eve, all right? Bishop Nathaniel, I love you with the love of Christ. Smile, Sister Audrey. Well, I do thank you, Sister Audrey, and I appreciate that. I do not take offense. I thank you so, so much. It's good to hear, con- con- what's the word? Uh, conduct, is it conductive criticism? Constructive, I'm sorry, I'm black. Y'all excuse me. All right, the next letter reads, Shalom Bishop uh, and leadership is your sister, the Jersey Jew, please my support to our brothers so they continue the mission all over where our family is. Just know not to say my government name. Uh, prayers for me as a supporter. I send much peace, love, and blessings to all 12 tribes. I watch all the classes and so happy I understand which time we are in with love, most high in Christ. Bless. This is from the Jersey Jew. Thank you, sis. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. This next letter reads, Dear Bishop, all praises to the most high God. Hope you and your family are doing well. God bless each and every one of you. And my family at Israel, not in Christ. Love you, Bishop. Your sister in Christ, Mary G. Oh, I did want to say this. Thank you, Mary G. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I did see a video, a sister forwarded to me, um, shout out to you, sis, you know who you are. Anyway, it was a, another sister doing a video saying that IUIC is very hard on the sisters. And I do, I, I do have to agree with that. And it's very, very necessary. Um, this, remember the sisters teach the children. And from what I've seen being 30 years in the truth, I've seen sisters get angry with their husbands or with the congregation and teach their children an evil lesson against both their husband and against the IUIC and against Christ. I've seen it happen. I've been in this truth. It's actually been over 30 years. So I'm very hard on the sisters. And that doesn't mean I'm not hard on the men. I deal with the men because I can sit with the men amongst the men and say things that I'm not allowed to say to sisters because of the cancel. Uh, what is it called? Cancel? What is this thing called? They'll cancel you. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I go on. The next letter reads, Shalom, my dear bishop, leader, and brother. I greet you in the name of the almighty, the great I am, who is above all. As we see Edom's wickedness, their increasing arrogance and audacious pomposity, wow, of which I'm not surprised. It baffles me how they refuse to accept the evident tra- trajectory, wow, of their prophetic demise and the eminent return of the Most High. You may not know me by face, but I pray and fast for the nation. All praises, you in leadership and myself. It is difficult when my grown children are remain. Let me see. And remaining parent and relatives aren't awakening. Dearest prophet, as we witness the normalization of sin and loathing of God's laws, our efforts must increase. The time of Amalek fooling themselves is coming to an end. You got that right. As the mirror of the word is put in front of their faces, 
I pray for God's forgiveness and mercy on us all. Thank you. I pray for his daily bread to keep us endured to the end. All praises to the Most High. Please use these arms for the movement towards the kingdom come. Shalom always, your Levitical brother, Pierre David F., a.k.a. David Bed. Okay, David, I'll play all praises. Please pray for my health as doctors. I recommend another surgery. Yes, sir, I'll definitely. I see you left your phone number there also. Brothers, sisters, um, always remember this. I do want to say this. Remember to pray for the nation. And remember, we are in dire times. As you see, um, our name and fame, if you can call it that, is be, being pushed worldwide. As you saw with the Barclays Center, the ADL, the SPLC are trying to come down to shut down IUIC, as well as some of the other Israelite camps. So we definitely do need your prayers, first and foremost, followed by your donations. Um, we're definitely going to need lawyers. So if you know any libel lawyers, any defamation lawyers, please get them in touch with us. Um, preferably, um, if they're good, bring them. But I would like our own people, if they have an empathy towards our movement, our plight. Um, I've seen with many of the so-called Jewish lawyers, when they know it's us, they raise the price exponentially. Uh, and many of them turn us down. So <clears throat> we need all the help we can get. All right. The next letter reads, uh, Shalom from Mordecai and Joy. We'd like to thank the bishops, deacons, captains, soldiers, officers for bringing out this truth of the Bible of who we are. Thank you. Putting our work in Shalom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next letter reads, Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. Uh, please use this wherever it's needed. Please keep me in your prayers as I continue to keep all of you at IUIC and Israel in minds. May God bless you abundantly who gather faith for our treasure. Uh, this is you call, you call Ben. Okay, all praises, all praises. The next letter is from Brother Paul of the tribe of Benjamin. All praises. Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ. Bless. Hope all is well with you and your family. I have visited the school in Detroit and visit, I have to stop because family member is sick in the home. I'm okay, thank the Lord, but I stay away from others anyway. Uh, shout out to Biblical Smoke and all the teachers. Anyway, it has been a well, a will. These are my monthly free will offerings to the Booster Club. Thank you again, Bishop, for the knowledge that God in Christ lay on you, Bishops. Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless all praises. Thank you, Brother Paul. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This next letter reads, Dear Bishop Nathaniel, uh, Shalom, sir, most high in Christ. Bless, I pray for you, your household, all leadership of Israel united in Christ. Use the arms wherever they are needed to help this truth spread to the four corners of the earth. The most high is turning this world right side up while simultaneously revealing the man of sin, which is the you ish man, biblically known as Amalek. That's right, the devil the Bible speaks of, the synagogue of Satan. Bishop, last Sabbath, my family and I took the initiative to travel to the IUIC camp in Columbia, South Carolina, to congregate for the first time after watching online for two years. The hospitality was amazing. It was like being around family members you've known all your life. Also to see the officers at the leadership table and to be in the same building as the prophets I teach I see teach on the streets, on YouTube. It's very exciting. All praise to the Most High Bishop. Shalom, Most High in Christ. Bless sincerely, Josiah. All praise. Thank you, Josiah. All praises, age 15. This next letter reads, Most High in Christ. Bless. Here is a token of appreciation to all the leadership. Uh, all praises to the Most High. Love, Oglesby, the Oglesby's. Thank you so much. This next one reads, Shalom Bishop and leadership again, the Jersey Jew sends arms to our brothers, continue our mission to gather the elect of Israel, always keep me in, always keep me in secret so I 
be blessed to continue to send alms to help. Please just pray for me so my health stays well. I send much love, peace to you all. Most high in Christ bless. All right. The next one right reads to the prophets. I've been looking for a class, a class closer to me, but so far I haven't found nothing that is close enough so I can drive. <clears throat> I need you all to pray for my health to get better. Yes, I'll be able to get a part time job. I'll send you something to help get the word, the word of God around the world to our sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. Sister Barbara, please let me know that this got, yes, it got to our hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All praises. All praises. All right. Let's get to the shout out donation. We will give a shout out of thanks to Anthony T. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Zipporah O.I. Shout out of thanks to, De to Deborah M. Shout out of thanks to D. Scully. D. Scully again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out of thanks to George S. To Audrey B. Thank you so much. All praises. Shout out of thanks to uh, Sheila K. and Jada R. Shout out of thanks to Sister Jocelyn C. Shout out of thanks to RDL D. Shout out of thanks to Leslie C. S. Shout out of thanks to Kenneth S. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Marvin B. All praises. Shout out of thanks to A.V. Miller. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Carleen M. Shout out of thanks to T. Hawkins. Shout out of thanks to Annette G. Shout out of thanks to George S. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Gwendolyn T. H. H. Shout out of thanks to Marie A.G. Thank y'all. Shout out of thanks to Charles L. Charlene. I think that's Charlene. Or is it Charles? Charles and Laura L. Thank y'all so, so much. Shout out of thanks to Arthur O.S. Shout out of thanks to Lenora L. M. Shout out of thanks to Sheila and Jada. Shout out of thanks to Pierre D. F. Shout out of thanks to Pierre D. F. Again. Shout out of thanks to Mor Mordecai. Mordecai J. I believe that is. Shout out of thanks to Usually Misunderstood. Shout out of thanks to Anita B. Shout out of thanks to Teresa A. P. Shout out of thanks to Brother Paul. Shout out of thanks to Brother Paul again. Brother Paul, one more again, again. And shout out of thanks to Cameron P. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Shout out of thanks <clears throat> to Alvin R. Shout out of thanks to Derek S. Shout out of thanks to Derek S. again. And Derek S. one more again. Shout out of thanks to Carlton K. Shout out of thanks to Royal I. Shout out of thanks to Sister Jocelyn C. Shout out of thanks to Ronnie S. Shout out of thanks to Herbert C. Shout out of thanks to Barbara S. Shout out of thanks to Robin and Daniel W. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Jackie M. Jackie M. One more time. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Leona C. And Kevin C. Shout out of thanks to Lin Little David. Shout out of thanks to mm, M. Thompson, I believe that is. All praises. Shout out of thanks to the Oglebees. Oglas Bees. All praises. Shout out of thanks to... Uh, mm, let me see. Danny L.P. All praises. Shout out of thanks to mm, uh, V. Reed, all praises. And last but not least, shout out of thanks to mm, uh, let's see, what does this say? Chuck P. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brothers, sisters, let's all stay healthy. Let's stay faithful. Let's stay focused. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ. Bless you all. Love you all. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Oh,